Hi everyone, I'm Chill and welcome back to another Battle Royale video. In today's video, I'll be sharing with you guys some stream footage of me checking out Xander's abilities and battle rights, like what I think about them and all that, and then I'll share my first impressions of him with you guys, with some Xander gameplay going on in the background. If you're not interested in seeing the beginning part where I cover his abilities and rights, then there's a timestamp either in the description below or a comment below, which you can click to bring you straight to the part where I share my thoughts on him. So with all that being said, let's begin. So his mouse one is trick shot, and what it does is he throws two magical cards. Each card deals six damage to enemies, heals five health onto allies, and heals yourself for two health on hit. And he also applies this buff called hearts on allies that he, that he hits. I guess that includes himself as well, since um he can conjure up illusions and all that if you've watched any of those previews and stuff. So anyway, this hearts buff pretty much just uh, reduces your damage taken by 15% for 4 seconds which is pretty good actually I would say 15% um, is actually quite significant so yeah I guess you want to be keeping this buff up onto your allies as much as possible and let's try shooting it sh first shall we uh, so let's shoot at this guy so he's gonna do 12 because 2 cards and uh, 6 damage each and it's also supposed to heal allies for 5 health alright alright Let's, uh, let's go try out the healing on this guy over here. So it's supposed to heal him for 10. If both cards hit. That's right, there you go. And this hearts thing is supposed to reduce the damage taken. So pretty cool. And I believe if you only hit one of them, it deals half the healing, as you can see. Or half the damage. If I can get it right, there we go. There's 6 damage. And of course, if you only hit one card, you only deal like 2 healing to yourself. If you hit both cards, you deal 4 healing to yourself. So pretty cool, his mouse 1 ability. 12 damage, it's uh, a bit on the medium end, I guess, because like, Poloma's uh, mouse 1 does 10 damage, and then like, Pearl's uh, mouse 1 does 15 damage, so it's a little bit in the middle. Root <laughs> words, he is varish, but support, yeah, kind of. I think... Um... Yeah, I guess that's a, that's one way to look at him. He's actually more of a range than support, I feel. Um, like, in terms of his uh, kit and stuff. But, uh, yeah, like, I think early reports say that his um, damage is good, but his healing is a bit lacking, especially for 3 versus 3s. But uh, we'll, we'll, we'll try him out and see whether that's true or not. And um, I think it's probably true, because he doesn't really have a lot of healing, but um, we'll have to test him out and see. I guess his teammates might have to play smart or something. Moving on, his mouse 2 ability is Grand Conjuration, and uh, what it does is a heavy magical projectile that deals 28 damage and pierces enemies. It inflicts Arcane Catalyst on target's hit, and this Arcane Catalyst is a debuff that makes the target take 13% more damage for 3 seconds. So, and of course, there's the uh, damage reduction per hit. He does have illusions, that's why low damage. Yeah, I guess you gotta use his illusions really, really well. And I, I think you gotta use his illusions for, for healing as well. So anyways, so right click, it pierces. So 28, 17, and 11. The damage is like so fast that you can, you can barely see um, how much damage is actually done. Oh, it's actually uh, 28, 16, and 10. But it shows... Somehow the the damage it shows uh, like 28, 17, and 11, but the numbers show like uh, something different. But in any case, that's his mouse 2 ability. So let's say this before this I do 12 damage. Let me apply Arcane Catalyst, and now I do 14 damage instead. So pretty good. Um, I think you can fit in. Let's see how many shots you can fit in. One, two, three. So you can you can boost your mouse one three times pretty much um, if you attack immediately next up is his space bar uh, this is his escape I guess mirror image and he turns immaterial and dash in a targeted direction leaving an illusion where he stood so he dashes and then that illusion can mimic his mouse one but he only throws one card um, like the illusion only throws one card and the real guy throws two cards so if you have like that and you can start doing like 18 damage and stuff or like you know if you basically um multiply your damage or healing output by 0 0.5 or like you know or 1.5 rather because it's like you know 15 percent 50 percent more 
And uh, so that's pretty cool. I feel like the spacebar ability is probably better used as like um as like a damage boost or heal boost. And uh, use Q for escapes instead, which we get to now, and that is his portal. So if you've seen any of those videos of Xander, he has his portal ability. And um, what is this? Xander or Virus Team Strong both reduce incoming damage, both increase damage taken. Yeah, that's true. That could be a combo, I think. And uh, he can he can help Varish a lot as well with the uh, portals and stuff, because that's a because Varish doesn't have a lot of mobility, so that's um something he can do. So basically, his portal, um, what it does is place a portal at a targeted location that teleports allies one at a time, removing them from the fight for one point five seconds before reappearing at a targeted lo sorry targeted destination of their choice. Teleporting an illusion increases its duration by one second, and grants you the ability to recast portal to pick up. To pick its target destination. So, if you have a, if you put it down here, um, and you walk through it, so you can target just like how you would in a Odor's ultimate ability, and if you cast it right on top of yourself, you actually go in immediately. So you can imagine that is like a mini Odor ultimate there, and of course, um, you can only go through it once, so you can't go through it multiple times. So if you see the picture, it means you haven't used it, and this swirling thing means you have used it. So there we go. Um, it says that you can teleport illusions, so what is this? Uh, no wait, Alicia, Xander, yes Alicia and Xander is going to be so fun. Yeah, I think Xander with anybody is going to be fun because you can teleport and, and everything. Just play it against Xander and Jade team up as a Ragon. Oh man, that, that, that feels bad man. Like, Xander is so annoying for lone melees. It's like not even funny. You just cannot catch him with three escapes. <laughs> and Jade is also another one that is um that really bullies melees. Who's Batman legend? It's okay. It's okay, bro. <laughs> and so apparently this thing uh lets you teleport illusions as well, so let's try that out. So that's the illusion, and we can teleport him. There you go. And it's supposed to um increase the duration of the illusion as well. So Illusions last. That's the timer. Let's teleport him. There. So it, it kind of like extends the duration of the illusion as well. So that's pretty cool. I haven't played yet, but I can see how bad it would be. Yeah. Um. I think Devilish played quite a few games with Xander earlier. He did win all 10 games with him as he was paired with Tuni. But I think initial impressions from Devilish is that he's uh, very, very weak. So next up, Sheep Trick. Turn enemies inside target area into harmless creatures, rendering them unable to use any abilities for 2.5 seconds. And if the target takes 20 damage, the effect is broken. So it's kind of like a panic, but except the enemies can choose where they're moving. So they can, you know, they can still juke you and all that. They just can't use their abilities. And it breaks when you do 20 damage. There we go. That's about it. Um, but this is his only CC as far as I know. Um, and so it is quite a high value ability that you'd want to hit most of the time, I think. Um, moving on, here is his rabbit form. That is his R ability. Turn into a rabbit to increase movement speed by 80% and remove any movement impairing effects. It also knocks away nearby enemies. So if I use it, it knocks enemies away and I can run faster. So pretty simple ability. And this is what another one of his escapes. Mm, I, don't, I don't think there's much to say about it, other than it lasts for 2 seconds. It reduces movement speed. Um, the, well, the E, it does a little bit. So this is how fast it's moving right now. Well, slightly. Not by a lot. I think it's almost, almost 0. I don't think it even reduces the movement speed. Because in the tooltip, it doesn't say anything. Does Polymorph decrease MS? No. As far as I can tell, no. And uh, moving on, his shift right click is Spotlight. And what it does is it enlightens target location, healing allies for 28 health over 2 seconds, and removes any negative effects on impact. Alright, on impact. So you can't just like, you know, um, put it down and walk into it. It has to like, you have to get the, the initial impact to get the uh, remove debuff. Not that I have a debuff here to get. Because um, none of these target dummies uh, apply any debuffs. 
But it does 28 healing over 2 seconds, and that's pretty good, I think. So it's good for, you know, when you want to heal yourself, there's melee enemies onto you, and you can sort of knock them back a little bit um, and get some healing. Only the initial impact knocks people back, though. Okay, yeah, that's right. Um, the next up, there's a mind game, which is his shift space ability. And it is pretty much the same as his spacebar, except instead of you teleporting to a location, you actually spawn the illusion at the location. So it's a little bit different there. Uh, it actually does some damage at the uh, at the targeted location. So as you can see here, it says turn material and send an illusion into the target di targeted direction. And upon its arrival, it deals 12 damage and inflicts arcane catalyst. So it also, it not only deals 12 damage, it also deals the uh, arcane catalyst, which lets you increase the damage. And um, just like your just like your normal mouse two ability. So pretty cool. You can pretty much like juke enemies. So you can make them think like you're gonna move here, but actually, nope, I'm actually sending my illusion there and I'm not actually moving anywhere. So yeah. 29 healing from one ability while it purges is so good. It's gonna be like Lucy Clarity, situational. Uh yeah, it is uh quite situational because you do have to sacrifice your you can either choose to do your mouse too, or you have to do your healing. And the mouse tool actually has a 6 second cooldown, which is quite significant. So like, you know, when you use your mouse tool, you, you don't have that burst healing um, for 6 seconds. Can you use EX space again? Yeah, I'm gonna just keep using it. I can just send um, illusions everywhere. Of course, you can, like with the normal illusion, you can uh, move them around. Let's see how far can you actually move it. So you can teleport, quite, teleport them quite a distance. Um... There you go. But bear in mind, your Q is actually one of your main escapes. So you don't really want to just like, you know, use use both your escapes just to do damage or something. Alright, time to show the ultimate ability. That's right. So his ultimate ability, uh, his ultimate ability is the Prestige. And what it does is it conjures a Grand Illusion at a targeted position. And this Grand Illusion copies a Trick Shot and Grand Conjuration cast. And it also helps you um, in performing Sheep Trick, uh, increasing its radius by 25%. Uh, something that I forgot to mention earlier is that both his Spacebar Illusions has 30 health. So they're actually quite weak, um, but his ultimate one has 50 health. There we go. And you can cast the Mouse 2 together. It also helps to cast um, the Mouse ones. Um, it lasts for 6 seconds and the normal ones last for 4 seconds so it lasts about 50% longer than your normal illusions and just like just like um, the normal illusions you can increase the duration with your Q move it around as you need so it's pretty cool I believe uh, if say I put it here I can move this over here move over here and I can bring all the way across the map if you need to which is pretty cool Literally gonna call Xander Shadow Demon. <laughs> yeah, pretty much it is kind of similar to Dota 2's Shadow Demon. And um, yeah, that's about it actually. Uh, the whole time I've been showing stuff without cooldowns, but if you use the F, this is the normal attack speed. Um, something to bear in mind is that this, uh, the the alt version of his illusion shoots two cards, so it doesn't just shoot one card like the normal illusion. It actually shoots two cards. So you're pretty much doubling your damage uh, when you have this out up. Which is pretty cool. So you can imagine if you you just put your out down and then blast the same person with your mouse too. That's 60 damage right there, pretty much. Because the uh, the first mouse too will will reach first. And then so the second the second mouse too will actually um have the little buff. Unless, like, you see what I did there, <laughs> um, I shot it at the same the same distance, then it will merge and become 49 damage. Oh wait, show his energy gain from his mouse ones and stuff. Alright. Alright, so now without infinite energy. So now he has zero energy. Um, let's see how many shots he has to take to get his out. One, two... Three. Uh, unfortunately, I don't get energy from the op. I forgot. Alright. One, two, three, four, five. So five gets you about a bar. 
uh, which makes sense, that's uh, 30%. So you need about um, 17 shots to get the full out. And um, if you use your out, what is this? A mysterious um, okay, let me let me do that again. Let's scrap some energy. Because I want to see how many shots you can, how many normal Mars one shots you can get off with your normal out. So let's go. Okay, first shoot on mouse two. One, two, three, four, five. So you can do one mouse two and five mouse ones with his ultimate ability. And uh, if you just use it without the thing, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you can do seven without doing a mouse two. Wait, what's his mouse one energy gain? Five percent? No, it's six percent. Is uh, pretty decent, I think. So yeah, those are all his abilities. There we go. Okay, so on to his battle rights. <laughs> um, the first one is Heart Restoration. And Hearts restore 6 health over the duration. So considering his lack of healing, like capabilities, I think that this battle right is pretty much a must pick all the time. So uh, let's move over to this guy here, which you can heal. And... Um, so if we apply hearts, he's supposed to get like 6 healing over the duration. Which is not a lot, but it's, um, it's something. So, you know, I mean eventually it it, uh, it adds up I guess over over time, over the game. And um, next up he has Ace Up The Sleeve. Travelling through a portal resets cooldown of Grand Conjuration. So if you use your mouse to portal... Go out there, and then use a mouse to again. There we go. That's something you can do. Um, it's pretty good for some nice burst damage. Um, quite like it. Stream lagging. No. Not like this, man. Oh, man. I think... I'm not sure if it's just you. I feel like it might be just you, bro. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, unfortunately, I don't have enough viewers to have the uh, stream transcoding. Anyway, the next battle right is Arcane Conductor. And what it does is it increases the duration of Arcane Catalyst by 1 second and damage taken by 7 seconds. So Arcane Catalyst increases the damage taken by an enemy of by 13%. But if you have Arcane Conductor, um, you increase the damage taken by 20% and it lasts for 4 seconds. So 1, 2, um, whoops. Suppose off no cooldowns. So let's see. 1, 2, 3... Four. So you can fit an extra hit in and your hits will do 16 damage instead of 14. Pretty good. See? Or oh, 15, sorry. Not 16. There we go. Pretty good. Um I think it's good if you um can somehow combo it with people to do like lots and lots of burst damage. I think that'll be pretty cool. Um, Arcane Shenanigans allows Grand Conjuration to bounce once upon wall hit and increases its max range by 10%. Can still only hit once per enemy. So if you take this, you have a mini Destiny out in it. Boom, boom. There we go. Saw that simple geometry right there. And uh, let's do it one more time. There we go. Hit the next one. And uh, maybe one more time to hit that one. Let's try it. I don't know if I can do this one. There we go. Perfect. <laughs> Lagging in 160p. Uh, feels bad, man, shiny. I'm sorry about that. But so yeah, Arcane Shenanigans, pretty cool. Um, I'm not sure if you it, it will fly super far if you shoot it from here. Yeah, it, it still flies the same distance if you depending on where you shoot it from. So it, it can potentially reach like halfway across the map with this. So you can imagine like something like that. Or maybe... Let me on no cooldowns here. It'll be much easier to test this ability. No yeah, so you can reach someone all the way over there with this ability. So I think it's actually a pretty good battle, right? Because you can stay from far away and um, pretty much just snipe anyone with the walls. <laughs> uh, next up, mirror it for, for, for his spacebar ability. There's Phantasmagoria. And it pretty much just increases the health of your illusions by 10 and the duration by 1 second which I think is pretty cool actually because if you use your space as a as a means of doing more damage and healing this can be pretty helpful since it makes your illusion last longer and you can get more healing and damage out of it next up there's poof um, 
Your illusions explode at the end of the duration, dealing 12 damage and inflicts a 0.5 second stuns. Uh, with your ult, your ult's illusions, explosions are bigger, it deals 20 damage and inflicts a 1 second stun. So we can put it over there, and when it's finished, boom, 12 damage and a 0.5 second stun. Or with your ult, Who's the greatest of them all? Um, we gotta wait a couple of seconds for it to expire. Boom, 20 damage and it's done. So yeah, pretty cool, but I don't you, you probably won't be able to get much use out of this damage and stun because people have like plenty of time to get out of it. But um what I think you can do would be to put the, the illusion and when it's about to expire, auto it, move it over here, boom. So of course my timing for that is a bit off, so let's try that again. So let's wait for the illusion to almost tick away and wait for about a second. I think I did a bit too slow. Let's try that again. <laughs> Alright, let's grab it. Boom. There we go. Let's try to get the timing right and let it explode immediately, shall we? So let's just grab it. Okay. Wait for as long as possible. Boom. So it seems like it's always, it always adds a little bit of timer to it at the end of it. So, but because the AOE is big enough, you can probably like, you know, do it consistently. But you have to pick it up just before it explodes though. So that's something you could do. Stacked deck and um, your first trick shot after using mirror image includes an additional card for both you and your illusion. So basically once you use your space bar or EX space bar, you do a total of 5 cards, there you go, 12, 12 and 6 for a total of 30 damage. But that's just your first hit, bear in mind. Um, but and any shot after that is like normal. I'm gonna be back in 10 to 15 minutes, cause screw my net, alright. Go ahead man shiny, no problem. So yeah, pretty cool um, for some nice burst damage. I'm not sure if it's that useful cause uh, you know, it can be quite hard to hit your first hit all the time. And um, it's kind of hard to get value out of it unless you have like um, really really good accuracy I think. Next up there's Showdown and this gives your yourself and allies traveling through portal a shield that absorbs up to 12 damage. So if I go through the portal and appear I get this little shield for 12 damage. It's quite useful because um, enemies can actually see where you are landing at. And so they have a split second to shift their aim and target you so it's kind of nice to have a shield wherever you land. That's late to the show, with, which uh, give yourself a 2 second haste buff after you get out of the um, the portal. Uh, it's a 50 second fading haste, uh, sorry, 50% fading haste. So it does reduce over time, but it's still, it's still good enough to like, you know, reposition and, um, and whatnot after using the portal, which is quite cool. Next, there's Around the World, which increases the teleport range of portal by 20%. So prior to this, it will, uh, let's stand at this spot here and um, let's see how far we can teleport to the left we can teleport to about here and let's try it with the battle right now and see how far we can go so try to stand in the same position and you can reach until about here so earlier without the um, the around the world we reached about here so about here from here and with around the world we can reach until about here um, I don't think it's that. I don't think it's that useful because um, usually the range is enough for you to teleport behind walls already, anyways. Even without, even without around the world, like you can be from here and you can like teleport all the way behind here. So, yeah, I don't think it's that needed. But um, I don't know. Maybe maybe you can use it, but I I feel it's not as good as the other two. Next up, there's lasting form for its E ability. Um, sheep trick consumes. Arcane Catalyst to extend its duration by 1.2 seconds. So the base duration, it's um, 1.2 seconds, uh, sorry, it's 2.5 seconds. But if you have Arcane Catalyst on the uh, on the enemy, you can transform them into sheep for 3.7 seconds, which is really, really long. So that's something you could do. Bear in mind that they still, it still, it still breaks upon like 20 damage. So you do have to take note of that. There you go, it still breaks. So yeah. Um, next is Let Astray, and Sheep Trick inflicts Arcane Catalyst on targets hit. 
So you can use that, inflict arcane catalyst, and do more damage this way. 32, 14, 14, 14, and so on. Um, this is good if you are like trying to set up combos with your E ability. You know, you turn stuff into sheep and then use your big damage and stuff. So that's kind of nice. And transformation sickness decreases the enemy movement speed by 15% during sheep trick. So I think normally like they don't get any um, movement speed debuff. So with this one, you, you do. So if you see, this guy actually moves slower. And then he speeds up a little bit. Just a little bit because it's only 15%. So it's not too OP. It's not like 50% or anything. It's just 15%. Next up, there's Bunny Hop. And um, what it does is it allows you to recast Rabbit Form to dash forward, knocking back yourself and target enemy upon hit, interrupting any ability being cast and inflicts a 1.2 second stun if the enemy is knocked into the wall. So you can pick this up, use your Rabbit, and you can use it again to sort of just jump a little bit to either gain more distance or to knock enemies away. So that's it's a bit like Ashka's E ability basically. And if you knock them to a wall, you can get the stun off. Which almost gives you enough time to use your mouse too, but uh, not quite. And it also does one damage by the way. It's not even it's not even mentioned in the tooltip, but it does one damage. Which is kinda cute. Um next up, there's three of a kind, which is his ultimate battle right. And what it does is that um, the ultimate will have a 3 second shield, uh, 20 damage shield, and it throws one extra card when copying your mouse one. So it will throw 3 cards instead of 2. See? See the extra yellow card? Yeah. And because of the shield, it also lets it last longer, which is kind of alright. I can see it being kind of useful, I think, because um, the, the thing about like... Um, what is this? Um, this guy is that like you won't be you won't be needing to use your rabbit form much, because you already have space and queue to like pretty much get out of almost anything. Um, mind game is kind of useful, spotlight is kind of useful, but I think his energy gain is still kind of alright, because um, he gets energy from his mouse one six percent, his mouse two gives ten percent, and I think it shouldn't take too long for him to charge up his um, and of course his E gives him six percent. To get his ultimate and then if his ultimate lasts longer and you can sort of uh, move them anywhere it can be kind of good i guess but as with uh, again as with most ultimate battle rights it's um it's hard to get value out of it so we just have to see like i, I feel like the, the the effect is really good if you can aim really well with the illusion but otherwise it's not that great i think so yeah, those were all of Xander's abilities and rights. After covering all of that, I jumped into a couple games with Xander with a couple of friends to test him out. And I think my first impressions of him is that he's a little lackluster right now. I don't know if it's because I haven't figured out the optimal way to play with him yet or not. But earlier today, I was in a 3 vs 3 game with the Paloma and Jade in the team while I was playing Xander. In the 5th and final round of that match, we had a long intense fight with the opponents where we eventually won. So of course, I did the best I could with Xander then. I think these kinds of long rounds are very good at gauging the strength of a champion because your mistakes and awesome plays in that round sort of average out and you can then get a good feel of how good the champion is currently. So after this round, even though I played well enough that I'm happy with my performance, Xander was still outperformed in terms of both healing and damage when compared with Paloma and this is not to say that Xander is completely useless in both because I think he does deal decent damage if you adopt a more aggressive playstyle. So yeah, my current impression on Xander is that he is very fun to play because of him having some nice escapes while occasionally doing massive amounts of burst damage with his mouse 2 or his ultimate ability. The only thing is that he is a bit lacking in terms of healing and that's towards both his team in 3 vs 3 and towards himself as well. I find that the best way for him to heal himself or his team is by using his illusions or his EX mouse 2 but that would mean he has to use an escape or a good damage cooldown just for healing his team. I guess using his space bar just for healing is kind of okay, since he does have other ways of escaping, but the heal from his EX muscle seems a little slow, and it feels like a waste using it sometimes, since you could potentially do so much more with his normal mouse to attack. In terms of utility, from what I can tell, his portal is pretty much used like Polymer's other side, where you'll be trying to save your teammates or yourself with it, and his sheep trick should be used like Sirius's Petrify. 
If you take his ace up the sleeve battle right, then there are some extra decision making to make with his portal ability since you want to use it to refresh your mouse 2 attacks, especially while your ultimate illusion is up. It seems to me that Xander should be played aggressively so that he can make use of his movement options and do supporting as a side thing. So that means typically you'll be trying to do damage, applying the arcane catalyst debuff onto enemies and only stopping to maybe apply the hearts buff onto your teammates and healing them up a little bit. If he's played as a backline support like how you would play Paloma or Lucy, then I think he loses a lot of his value as a champion since he cannot turn people into sheep or use his mouse too effectively from so far away. His healing is lacking, so he will struggle to keep his teammates alive as well if he doesn't apply pressure to the enemy team with his own damage output. So yeah, that's what I can tell about Xander for now. Time will tell if he's actually good, average or below average I suppose. For now, my feel is that he's somewhere between average and below average since he's only really good at running away and somewhat decent at doing some damage at medium distances and I guess sometimes healing his team a little bit. So yeah, those are my first impressions of Xander. Do let me know what you guys think of him and tell me about your experiences with him and all that. I'd love to hear about them from you guys. So that's mostly it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and found it useful. Thank you everyone for watching and until next time guys, I hope you guys have a great day. Keep gaming, stay chill and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.